Are you the wrestler at training who's always got bloody elbows or kneecaps that are covered in mat burns? If so, today's video is just in time because we're talking pads, braces, sleeves, all manner of protective gear. I'm Mike Quagginbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I have been fortunate to work in front of the cameras as a pro wrestler, referee, commentator, and ring announcer. And I've worked behind the scenes too, as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. And if you like the content that you find right here on my YouTube channel, then you'll love what I've got going on over on my Patreon. Not only can you get access to exclusive videos, but also podcasts, book excerpts, essays, and unreleased material that you won't find anywhere else. I create all of it to help fellow professional wrestlers. A link to my Patreon is down below. Today, I want to cover all the types of protective gear that I wear in the ring. So I'm going to start with the latest addition to my arsenal, which is a wrist sleeve from Copperfit. About 10 years ago, I had a pretty serious injury on my left hand, and the condition of my wrist has deteriorated ever since. In the years that followed, I tried everything to be able to protect my wrist. I would wrap it up with all the tape that I had. Then I switched over to the kind of wraps that you might expect a boxer to use on their hands. Then I was wearing a weightlifting glove with a compression strap pulled as tight as I could possibly get it, and nothing was bringing me any relief. By 2012, Wrestling was excruciating because of the pain from my left wrist, and this has gotten a lot worse in the last year. In fact, I even alluded to it in one of my videos, whose title is escaping me right now, but I'm sure I will think of it the second that I'm done recording this for you. Anyway, I have found some relief with this piece of protective gear. It is just a simple sleeve from Copperfit. And this is a piece of protective gear I take everywhere with me. It's also like the best $20 I ever spent. These are commonly found. Sporting goods stores, Target. Of course, you can find them online. I will link you to one down below. But this simple fix has brought me a lot of relief. The next piece of my protective gear that I want to share with you is what I wear on my knees, which are these braces by McDavid. And just so we're clear, None of these companies are paying me to talk about their products. This is not a sponsored video. This really is the protective gear I wear every single time I'm in the ring. And these McDavid braces are very durable. I bought this just prior to my 2011 match at High Noon with Eddie Kingston. And as you can tell, still in great shape even after all these years and all these matches. I prefer the variation with the open patella, but they have variations without. I'm gonna make sure as well to link to this stuff down below for you, keeping in mind, McDavid's even changed their logo since I bought these, so it may look a little bit different when you look them up online nowadays. But this has stood me in good stead. I wear this anytime I think I need a little extra knee support, especially when doing moves like splashes, the Meteora, knee drops, jumping toe holds, anything where I might have a little bit of that extra impact on my knees, I make sure I've got my knee braces on. For some people, a knee sleeve is all they need. In my case, my McDavid brace is the perfect solution. But if you need more resistance against impact, you may want to bulk up and go with a full knee pad for training or for shows. In years past, I used to wear bulky knee pads. However, I discovered this. That extra bulk around my knees prevented me from being able to bend my legs enough to make the leap to the top rope for springboards. And after two in-ring botches, because I couldn't make the leap to the top rope, I decided to phase out my really bulky knee pads. So bear that in mind. For me, the McDavid brace is all I need. And that makes me think of this. I have also worn ankle supports by McDavid. I used to have two braces. And then at a show, someone asked if they could borrow them. And my ankle braces mysteriously disappeared. Are you watching right now? Do you have my two McDavid ankle supports? May I have them back, please? Oh, I've got a quick pro tip for you. If you're wearing any kind of ankle support that's thicker than a sleeve, consider that additional bulk inside your shoe. Now, 
A good wrestling sneaker is going to provide you with a little extra support around your ankles, provided that you lace them all the way to the top and you use that last pair of eyelets. Same is going to be true of most wrestling boots. Even a three-quarter or half boot, if it's laced all the way to the top and it's not made of the softest material on earth, is going to provide you with a little extra support. But during the time that I had to wear ankle supports because I was recovering from a sprain, I had to bump up my wrestling sneaker size from a 12 to a 13, so I had that extra wiggle room that accommodated the support. This next one's a protective gear essential as far as I'm concerned. I'm talking about elbow pads, and this is my Trace elbow pad. For my money, Trace pads are the best elbow pads ever made. Unfortunately, they are no longer made. You can get Trace pads on the secondary market, like if you look around on eBay, and yeah, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive than what you would expect to pay if you just found a pair at retail. Are they worth it? In my opinion, they absolutely are. I think that short of getting custom elbow pads made for yourself, the best off-the-rack option professional wrestlers ever had for elbow pads were trace pads. And now I wanna to confess to you about a little rabbit hole I fell down recently because I wanted to know where did these magical elbow pads go? Trace pads were made by a company called Adams USA, but in recent years, Adams USA was acquired by Shut Gear. They make football helmets, batting helmets, and other sporting goods. Shut Gear's 2019 catalog had something in it which looked like an equivalent of the Trace elbow pad. That made me think, maybe it's just been rebranded with a new name since the company acquired the other company, blah, 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 and they're still out there. We could get them. I also thought, even if they're not available at retail, maybe I could get them in bulk and we could make them available to other wrestlers here through till we make it. So I reached out to the Shut Gear group once, twice, three times, four times total, trying to find out any information about this item that was in last year's catalog and yet never seemed to make any appearance in retail shops. And after trying, 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 and trying, I eventually got a one sentence email back from Shut Gear saying that item is no longer available for sale. But I tried. I am fiercely loyal to my Trace elbow pads. This one's more than 10 years old now. And I do appreciate that my Trace pads aren't going to last forever, but I've tried out competing brands over the years. Some years ago, I tried out bike brand elbow pads. It's possible they're no longer made, but those weren't a good fit for me. The second I would start training or performing, that elbow pad would just fly right down my arm. I also tried Mizuno, which is a brand that is still manufactured, and while they were just fine, I considered them secondary to my trace pads. I also briefly tried out a volleyball brand called Tandem, and I'm of the opinion that they look a little bit goofy. It might be a good fit for you, I don't think they were for me. If you find trace pads on the secondary market, you're likely to discover this. The really popular and in-demand colors like black, blue, and red cost a premium price. If you're looking for something more economical, you might be able to get a set in white or in yellow. Remember this, those lighter colors, even after a couple training sessions or a couple matches, they're gonna show every spot, every speck, every piece of dirt, every drop of blood is going to be really apparent on those lighter color pads and they will look worn down almost immediately. So something to consider. Reach out to your gear maker and see if they couldn't make you a custom sleeve that fits the pad that you've got, which is precisely what I did. In an effort to extend the life of my trace pads, I had these blue and gold sleeves made, which match the blue and gold gear I had done for Johnny Kidd's retirement match in Manchester, England. And my pad fits perfectly inside the sleeve. So rather than the audience seeing this half-worn away Trace logo every time I'm out there wrestling, instead, I've got a nice accessory which actually ups my in-ring presentation. A piece of protective gear I think we've got to talk about is an athletic supporter, particularly any hard shell cup that you might have on. While I've never worn one, I've been in the ring with people who do, and I want to give you this bit of advice. 
Consider very carefully what moves you plan to do with someone who's wearing a hard shell athletic supporter because at least once I picked someone straight up into a power bomb and had that hard shell hit me right in the nose. If you plan to wear a hard athletic supporter into the ring for training or for a show, I think it's the kind of thing you might want to mention to the person that you're wrestling with. So what kind of protective gear do you wear? Would you let me know down below in the comments? And if you haven't yet, now's a fine time to join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below. And while you're doing that, would you please enable notifications? That is a key algorithmic engagement signal, I have been told.